Before I get to this new series, let me first brag a little bit about what God did last weekend. And not only what he did here at this local church, but what God did at the Capitol, as a, to, to the, in the Capitol C Church. I heard one guy say it like this, that last Sunday Easter was like a new watermark for post-COVID church attendance. And I thought that, that was an interesting way to say it, because so many people kind of opted out of church attendance after COVID, during COVID, and after COVID. And it's been sort of a kind of a, a slow, gradual return. But last Sunday, uh, here at this local congregation, I don't know, I don't have the final number, but if I'm not mistaken, it was a little bit over 900 people, and I think we can get a lot of for that. I really, really am, but, but real actual life change in people's eternity. That's what I'm most excited about. Amen. Amen. So real quickly, let me remind you, um, we got a lot of stuff going on here at Acacia. Next week, uh, we will do the color run for the Acacia Kids uh, team. That was supposed to be today, of course. We were not able to have that because of what, and by the way, if you don't know, someone was coming through here last night about midnight, one o'clock and hit a power pole and knocked the power pole down and the lines were across the road and so they shut down the roads and we didn't have electricity. So that's kind of, that's what happened. That's why we had to kind of pivot this morning. But the color run will be next Sunday. Moms and dads do not bring your children in clean clothes because they are going to get dirty. They're going to get messed up. And then also student camp is right around the corner. Uh, both Acacia kids and Acacia students are rolling and I'm just so thankful for what God is doing there. Uh, if you have not yet been through Discovery, you get a bonus attempt because it was supposed to start today, uh, but it will be pushed back to next Sunday as well. Also, child dedication is next Sunday. A lot of you have, have already kind of reached out and inquired about that, but during the third gathering, we will be having our child dedication. You can sign up for that on the app. And there's just so much good going on, man. Freedom groups are going great. Community groups are going great. Water baptisms are right around the corner. There's a whole lot of good going on in the kitchen. So today we begin this new series, uh, and you can see it on the screen, but it is called There Is More, and, and we're going we're gonna to talk about life with the Holy Spirit, and, and you're going to have to help me, because uh, here, here's the thing, I, I think this is, could be one of those moments where the enemy meant to harm us through these actions that happened last night and this morning, but I think God can use this to do something incredible. I think that yes, God can yes. use tonight to do something absolutely fantastic. But you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to help me teach. You're going to have to help me preach. You're going to have to give me some good loud amens and let me know that you are right there with me. Uh, and and I'll, just, I'll just ask you, is anybody excited about being at church on a Sunday night? Right. Where you're right? Come on, anybody excited about being in our heart? Amen. Everybody say there. There. Yeah. Yes. Yes. More. More. So this series is going to be a lot of fun for me uh, because this one's way down deep in my bones, man. This one's going to be pretty easy for me because this one, this one goes old school, and I'm excited about it. And, and I can go back to day one of vacation. I was talking to Brandon Stewart before the gathering, and Brandon Stewart was there on that first interest meeting that we had. Uh, somebody else in this room may have been there as well. But on that very first day where some people had heard, hey, there's a church coming to town, and they came, and we had this interest meeting in our home out in Geisler, in Old Mill Subdivision, and, and I told the church then, and I want to tell the church now, we will be a spirit-led church, we will be a spirit-filled church, and we will, we will be a spirit-driven church. And you can <laughs> Led. The Holy Spirit is out in front of us, leading the way, guiding where we need to go. Spirit filled. The Holy Spirit is within us, empowering us to do, to do the, the will of God in our lives. And then Spirit driven. The Holy Spirit is behind us, pushing us, driving us forward, and, and allowing us to accomplish things that we could never accomplish on our own. So over a decade now, we've been saying this. And I want tonight, and I want this series to kind of hit the reset button on that and say that we will always be spirit-led and spirit-filled and spirit-driven. And I want to begin this message and this series the way that we ended or where we ended last Sunday. That's why I wanted to keep the cross up on, up on the platform here. So, so if you're new to Acacia, usually we don't have the cross up here, but we've got this cross up that was part of the Easter set design last Sunday, and I said, you take the other stuff down, but I want you to leave the cross up because, 
Because the cross kind of kind of sets the stage for where, where we go from here. Okay? And, and I want you to listen closely to that. Jesus died on the cross for the salvation of all who by faith choose to receive that salvation. Anybody thankful to be saved in the house? Give me a good amen. amen. And when Jesus rose up out of the tomb on that third day and he is alive and he's still alive, and I think we can say amen to that too. The church wasn't open this morning, but the tomb still is. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so on, uh, on, on when, when that happened, that was the close of, of the part of the Bible that's called the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the stories of Jesus written from four different perspectives. Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke, John wrote John, and they all end with the cross and the resurrection. But the mindset that I want you to have as we go into tonight's message and as we go into this series is, okay, but what then? Where, where do we go now? Now that, now that the cross has happened, now that the resurrection has happened, what where, where does this story lead us to this after that? Well, the very next book in your New Testament is a book by the name of Acts. And Acts continues the story because, ladies and gentlemen, there is more to the story. And that's where the title of the series comes from. And so if you were here last Sunday, you heard me say that I am I'm big on theology. But I think it's important to also be uh, very big on the application of theology. Uh, and somebody can say amen to that. Because here's what you have to understand. It's, it's, it's one thing to know some theology, but it's a completely different thing to actually live that theology out, right? Don't, don't look around, but do you know some people who can spout some stuff off, but they live like the devil? Come on, somebody. Right? They, they, they're good at telling you what you are doing wrong, but they're not necessarily doing right. And so there's a difference between knowing theology and applying that theology and the book of Acts is, is just that. According to the book of Acts, after the cross, there is more that we get to learn about. According to the book of Acts, after the cross, there is more that we get to experience. And I don't know about you, but any time that I realize that God has more for me, I want it all. Is anybody in the house want all that God has for you in your life? Say amen. Come on, say amen. Say amen. So I want more. Everybody say more. more. And so the subtitle for tonight, you'll see it on the screen, but is the progression of presence. The progression of presence. So there's more, and we're going to learn about life and the Holy Spirit, but this first Sunday, we're looking at the progression of presence. And so to understand that, let's go to the book of Acts. Again, the context is this, the death and the resurrection of Jesus has happened and there's some last words that Jesus is sharing with his disciples before he ascended. And a lot of his words hinged on two things. Number one, he talked a lot about the coming of the kingdom. And the second thing he talked a lot about was the coming of the Holy Spirit, which that is where we're going to focus over the next couple, three weeks. So let me read from the book of Acts. It's on the screen for you. It's not in your notes because we could not upload them to the notes because we have power, but we don't have internet. So you'll just have to kind of take some pictures if you're interested in holding on to, to some of these things up here. But Acts 1 and 1 begins like this. In my former book, time out. In what former book? Luke. Luke wrote the book of Acts. And so the gospel of Luke, where he tells the story of Jesus, is his first book. So he's saying to this gentleman by the name of Theophilus, by the way, a great name. If you're expecting, he's going to be a son. Theophilus is a great name. He'd be the only Theophilus in kindergarten probably, but it goes like this. He said, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. Verse 3 says, after his suffering, he then presented himself to them and, and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He, he appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and he spoke about the kingdom of God. So, so what's happened here is, is after the resurrection, Jesus has presented himself, and he said, hey, here I am. Look at me. See me. I am, I am here. I am not dead. I am alive, just like I said that I was going to be. He presented himself to them and gave many proofs that he indeed was alive, and he hung out with them for about 40 days, kind of talking with them, and a lot of his conversation was about the kingdom of God. Verse 4, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. 
Do not leave Jerusalem. Everybody in the house Bible say Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John, talking about John the Baptist, baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, because they came, watch, they came to Jerusalem because of this festival, and then they ended up staying in Jerusalem because of the crucifixion of Jesus and now the resurrection of Jesus. And he says, hey, do not leave Jerusalem because more is coming. Something else is coming. Look at verse 6. Then they gathered around him and they asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his own authority. Look at verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria. And that's like saying you will be my witnesses in Baton Rouge and EBR and, and Acadiana and, and Louisiana and, and the entire world. So it's like starting in a small place, but then it's going out from there. That's what Jesus is saying. So what he said is don't leave Jerusalem because there is more. Everybody say, there is more. There is more. And then six and seven, they, like us, catch this, you got to catch this. They made, some, they made some wrong assumptions about this more that was coming. Now, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta catch what I'm saying right here. There were some followers of Jesus that had some misunderstandings about, about what was coming next, about this more that was coming next. And then in verse 8, Jesus says the baptism of the Holy Spirit is coming and it's going to give you power. Now, there's a lot of things that you need to realize as we start talking about this. There's some things that you need to learn, but there's some things that you need to experience. And here's a few for you to consider as we kind of get traction moving forward. Number one on the screen, if you are not yet familiar with the experience of the Holy Spirit, do not get nervous. Everybody say, Phew. All right? Depending on your path, Depending on your past, depending on your spiritual heritage or upbringing, you may have some miscommunication or some misunderstanding about this concept of the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to help you with that today. In fact, I just, I just kind of connected these dots uh, yesterday. In the book of John, Jesus appears to his disciples, and you know what he says? He says, peace be with you. And he says it twice. He says it also over here in, 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 uh, in verse 26. He says, Peace be with you. In other words, there's more coming, but I want you, I want you to relax a little bit and just, and just chill because I got you, boo. Okay, that's what Jesus was saying, right? So what Jesus is saying is, is after the resurrection, peace, chill out, but more is coming. Now, now here's where we throw in some, 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 you have to smile because some of you have some old stories in reference to the Holy Ghost. Some of you have some, some of you, some of you visited, visited churches with a friend and that was a little, little bit of some shake and bake going. You know what I'm talking about? Like it, 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 don't, don't get me wrong. I can shake and bake with the best of them. I, I can throw down with you, brothers and sisters. I can get right down. Watch, don't, don't threaten me with a good time. We'll go there right now. Right? But some of you are like, I don't know about all of that. Right? And, 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 and I just want you to understand, okay, I get it, but you can never let a limited understanding hinder a promised experience. Yeah. I want to say that again. You can never allow a limited understanding to, to hinder a promised experience. So if you're not yet familiar with the experience or the, the experiencing the Holy Spirit, don't get nervous. Number two, I love this one. God used an intellectual to record and present the supernatural. Luke wrote Acts. Luke wrote Luke. Luke wrote, also wrote Acts. And what I want you to understand about Luke is Luke was a physician. So if you're reading the Gospels, and you're looking for some differences in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Luke talks differently about some of the healings because they freaked him out. Because he was a physician, and when he tried to fix people and heal people, he couldn't do it all the time, and Jesus would come and just like, and heal somebody. He was in awe at the healing power of Jesus because he was a physician. So this means that he was Greek educated. This means that he was very intelligent, and he was a physician. He was not nutty, okay? He was not goofy. What was it? He was an open intellectual, which leads to number three. You should open up, not shut down. Yeah. Whenever it comes to, the, to this teaching and preaching of the Holy Spirit, the more you open up your head and the more you open up your heart, the more you're going to get. Listen, I came across this in study. 
this week. The Holy Spirit is what's called an experiential truth. An experiential truth. Listen, that means that he is not just a doctrine that you need to know about. He is a reality that you need to experience. Come on, come on. You don't just need to know about him. You need to encounter him and experience him. So there's, there's, it, there's hundreds of references, direct or indirect, to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament alone. And I want to give you seven different ways. I'm, I'm giving you a lot, I know, but you got you got to catch this. And we're going to make some sense of this in a second. But folks received the Holy Spirit. Folks experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. By the way, that's going to be the focus of the third installment of this series. People were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fell upon them. All by them. The Holy Spirit came upon them. The Holy Spirit rested upon them. The Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. So there's seven different ways of verbalizing these different encounters and interactions are in the New Testament. And over the next three weeks, I'm not going to have time to break down each one of them, but I want you to realize that the New Testament not only teaches who and what the Holy Spirit is, all right? Not only does the, whole, not only does the New Testament tell you about the initial experience of the Holy Spirit, but it teaches us about living our life in step with the Holy Spirit, yeah. where he, He's walking with us, and He is helping us, and He's leading us, and He is guiding us. So to try to wrap your head around this, I want to give you some quotes that you can kind of hold on to. You want to take these pictures, whatever you want to do to hold on to these, because I want to I want to give you something from John Bevere and Kevin Gerald and Martin Lord Jones, which I'm kind of borrowing some of their material to put some of this. But I thought that I would start with the great theologian Russ Cripps. Come on, somebody. <laughs> on the screen, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Everybody say the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Come on, everybody say the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God within you, empowering you to effect the will of God through you. Okay? All right, let's see what John Bevere has to say about it. On the screen, based on 1 Corinthians 12, the Father initiates, that's in verse 6, the Son administrates, that's in verse 5, and the Holy Spirit manifests, that's in verse 7. Yet all three who are one work together for our best purpose. And that word manifest right there means to make evident or to bring into reality or to show or to help display. Pastor Kevin Gerald says this, the Holy Spirit is God's invisible yet tangible presence that doesn't just come to be around us, but comes to be in us. And then Martin Lloyd-Jones, I think he's maybe from England, an old theologian, says the Holy Spirit is the presence of a holy God that regenerates, convicts, enlightens and empowers the believers. And I didn't think that it would be proper to give you all these quotes if I didn't give you some Jesus as well, okay? So Jesus said this in John 14 and 26. This is so beautiful, guys. This is so incredible. This is out of the Amplified version. So it kind of tells you what's up, and then it amplifies and helps clarify what's being said. But the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, the standby, the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name or in my place or to represent me or to act on my behalf, he will teach you all things. And he will cause you to recall everything that I've told you. He will cause you to, to be reminded of. He will bring it to your remembrance. How beautiful of a scripture is that? Like, I'm going to read it one more time. But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And he will cause you to recall everything that you have been taught and told. I love that. I love that. So listen, last Sunday, after all of our gatherings, uh, my brother and I had planned a trip. And I jumped on a plane with him to go do some, some brother bonding time, right? And, um, and, and on the way home, I was thinking about this message. And I looked out of the plane, and, and I noticed the topography of what was going on. I think we've got the, 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 uh, the image up here. So, so this, is, this is probably going to be somewhere like in the Panhandle of Texas, somewhere, somewhere in North Texas, all right? Because what's going on, just keep it up there, what's going on here is the soil is really good to, to grow things in, but it's, it's very arid. They, they don't have a whole lot of rain up there. They don't have a whole lot of, 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 of irrigation. So what they have to do is they have to bring all the irrigation in. Now, some of you, you may look at this and think, well, that's 
crop circles in the aliens have been there, but that's not exactly true, okay? Maybe, but what's more probable here is those are the, are the areas in each, watch, each, some of you may not know this, each shape represents something that they're growing and the way that they have to irrigate that particular plot of land. Okay, so some of the squares and some of the rectangles, what's going on there is they've got pipes all the way around and they've got some pipes in the middle. They'll put some water in there and the plants will be irrigated. I did not know this until just a few years ago, but those round things, you can't really see it in that photograph, but always in the middle of those round things is a tiny little circle inside of the circle and that circle is different than the rest of the circle. What's going on there is in the middle of that circle, there's an irrigation pump that comes up out of the ground and there is a basically a long arm and it's motorized and it goes in a circle. So it, it's stationary in the middle and it'll go all the way around in a circle and it will irrigate that area. That's why you see crops growing in that, that perfect circle. You're like, how does that happen? It's because of the way that they irrigate that particular thing. You can't see it in this image, but up in the top right, there's a bunch of those huge windmills that produce electricity. So what I want you to understand here is looking at this image right here, you get a clear understanding of how the crops are grown up there in that particular part of the area. Here's where I want to preach to you a little bit. I noticed that there's a difference looking down at this. I noticed that there's a difference between being in the fields and being above the fields. Listen closely. This is going to be, listen, this is going to be so helpful for so many of you if you hold on to this. To truly know and experience the fields, you have to be both in the field and above the field. To truly understand what's going on. So flying from 30,000 feet, the view gives you a greater understanding of the bigger picture. But without you walking through the fields, you'll never have an actual experience. Come on, somebody. You can, ready? We can go back to knowing some theology of the Holy Spirit. But I don't want you to just know the theology of the Holy Spirit. I want you to walk through the fields and encounter the Holy Spirit and, and, and be engaged with the presence of the living God. So, so I've flown over it now. And then sometimes I'll drive through that area going up to Colorado and I'll swim out on the side of the road and I'll get out and I'll go just go and get out of the truck and walk around for a little bit. And, and you walk through the fields and you, and you touch the, the, the bushes that are coming up. Because it's one thing to be above because it gives you a greater understanding, but it's a different thing to be down in the middle of it because it gives you a greater experience. And as I just said, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know about the Holy Spirit, but I want you to experience the Holy Spirit. So before we begin to sort of land this plane, and by the way, we're gonna have a we're gonna have some time here at the end for us to just kind of have some worship. I'm excited about that. But let me give you a little bit more insight, not through my words, but by way of scripture. So Jesus is teaching and preaching in John chapter 7. It's the last day of a holiday called the Festival of Tabernacles, and he just drops a bomb about this concept of more. John 7 reads like this. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. That's good news, right? Everybody said that's good news. Everybody said that's good news. It goes on. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this, what was he talking about? By this, he meant the Spirit. Notice the capital letter S. That's the Holy Spirit he's referencing. By this, Jesus meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in Jesus were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not yet been given. Why? Because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Okay, this one's going to help you if you'll let it. Here's what this means. Jesus is saying there's coming a day when everybody who believes in me, everybody who, has, everybody who places their faith in me, you're going to experience something that the best way that it can, it can be explained is like it's, it's something that's coming out of the inside of you. It's like a, a river that's flowing up out of the inside of your very being. By this, he meant the Spirit. Because the cross had not happened yet so that the Holy Spirit, and the, here's the, the authorized version, the Holy Spirit had not yet come in that manner. 
Notice this directly ties into the subtitle that I'm trying to make sure that you tie a, 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 good, a good anchor to this progression of presence up to this point. Watch. In the Old Testament, God was for us. Everybody say for us. for us. And then through the way of Jesus, through the person of Jesus, then God comes in and God is with us. Everybody say with us. Yes. The book of Matthew said his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. And now the Holy Spirit, God is in us. So God was for us, then God was with us, and now God is, is in us. And then the story gets even better as we get to the book of Acts because Jesus reveals even more of this progression of presence in Acts 1, 4, and 5. Again, we go back to Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. John the Baptist baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now I need you to listen closely. I'm not far from being done, but listen closely. The people that Jesus was talking to about and talking to and talking in front of. They were familiar with this progression of presence because they were familiar with the teachings of Jesus. They had been with Jesus for all of his ministry. They had been listening to the ministry of Jesus now for three years. So they knew the teachings of Jesus. These people also, not only had they, had they heard his preaching, but they had seen his miracles. They had seen him not only crucified and buried, but now they had seen him come up from that grave. And what he was saying here in this moment in Acts chapter 1, he was saying, I know that you've experienced a lot. I know that you've encountered a lot, but there's more. These people were not perfect, but they had witnessed perfection in Jesus face to face. And now Jesus was saying, there's more that I want you to encounter. Not only did these people have all of the facts, because a lot of people have the facts down, but they also had the faith. But even with the facts and even with the faith, Jesus said, there is more. And so what Jesus said, he said, stay where you are. Stay full of faith. Don't let life beat you down. Come on, here's the application. Don't let your circumstances drag you down. Don't let your job situation get you hindered. Don't let your family situation get you hindered. Don't let your health situation get you hindered. Stay right where you are. Stay full of faith because something big is about to happen. And I believe that just as he said it to them, he said it to us again today. Stay with you just a little bit longer because it's super important that you realize and accept that there's this progression of presence that comes along with a corresponding progression of knowledge and progression of faith. I recently heard the story about a guy who went to the New York Stock Exchange for the very first time. And if you've seen videos of this or movies of this, it is chaos. It is absolutely crazy. There's people screaming and hollering and carrying on. And so he goes in there with a friend of his and they're walking in and, and, and then the, the opening bell happens and he says it was like somebody kicked over a pile of, of fire ants. I mean, people were just going crazy hollering and screaming and on their phones and shouting, waving all kinds of stuff. It was absolute chaos in all kinds of ways. And here's the moral of the story. For the unfamiliar one in that setting, it was a little bit uncomfortable. And listen to this. It wasn't uncomfortable because of oddness or danger. It was uncomfortable because the gentleman in this situation was just unfamiliar with the workings of the stock exchange. But the more he saw, the more familiar he became. The more he learned, the more familiar he became. And the more familiar he became, the more he experienced. And so it is with the Holy Spirit. The more familiar you are with the functioning and the working and the power of the Spirit, the easier it is that you flow in the Spirit. And the deeper and the more beautiful your experiences begin to happen. And again, I want you to relax because I'm not going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. I just want you to get one last image in your head. I want you to picture that I invite you, that I'm very nice, that I invite you to an LSU game next season, okay? And you go to the game with me, and you're going to see people at the game, and some people are going to be wearing a hat, and some people are going to be wearing body paint. <laughs> I'm going to be in a hat. <laughs> get that clear. Ready? Both are expressing themselves in different manners, but it's all about being involved in the game. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not trying to manufacture something here. I'm not trying to manipulate your emotions and your feelings here. I'm just trying to get you to understand, so it is with the Holy Spirit. People respond and react in different ways, but it's all designed to lead us to the same place of a spiritual encounter. So I want the band to come and help me as I get ready to close here doing good on time. But as I close, 
I want to point to this subtitle one more time. Progression of Presence. And I want you to understand that the progression of experiencing the Holy Spirit comes with the corresponding progression of the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. And that corresponds with the progression of faith. So the, the more you experience is going to be based on how much you know and then how much you are willing to apply. So again, we go back to the theology and the application of the theology. Because I'm not interested in you leaving here saying, okay, I know more about the Holy Spirit now. I'm interested in you leaving here having encountered the Holy Spirit. In fact, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to say this. Um, I don't want you to say it loud. A lot of times I get you to say things loud because it just kind of creates energy and vibe. I'm going to do that until I'm dead. Okay, y'all have to put up with it forever. So just kind of work with me through it. But here's what I want you to say, and I don't want you to say this loud, but I do want you to verbalize it. I want you to say this out loud, okay? I want you to say, this is for me. And I want you to believe that when you say it. In fact, I want you to say this. I want you to say, this really is for me. It really, it really, really is for me. Like, because here, here's the thing. This concept of the Holy Spirit, I, I, I've come to say it like this, it's as much a part of this Bible as creation in Calvary. You, you, you cannot take out the Holy, the Holy Spirit. You, you cannot take out experiencing the Holy Spirit. It, it just, it, the Bible doesn't work in, in, that, in that capacity. So this really is for me, because here's what I want you to understand as I'm closing. In the Old Testament, the Spirit moved, but it's like it moved on an exceptional people for a very specific purpose or a very specific cause. But now the infilling of the Holy Spirit, or the receiving of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for every single believer. And I believe that with everything that is within me. God speaking in this progression of presence through the Old Testament prophet Joel, last scripture of the night, you'll see it, Joel 2.28. And afterwards, in other words, there's coming a day because the prophet is foretelling of a time that's coming. God is speaking through the prophet. It's in quotes here. This is God speaking himself through the prophet Joel. And he said, there's coming a day where I'm going to pour out my spirit on all people. And if you're new to vacation, or you've never heard me say this, let me tell you a little bit. Of, let me let you peep behind the curtain. Let you, let you, I want you to know who I am. When the Bible says the word all, your boy here thinks... It means all. Amen. Like whenever the scripture says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, I think that that all means all. Coming to me, all who are weary, I think all means all. Right here. Because it either means it or it doesn't. All means all or all doesn't mean all. And I think all means all. He says, I will pour out my spirit on, on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, speaking God's will into existence in your life. And your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. I'm just foolish enough to believe every word that was right there written by God's voice himself. I, I, I believe every word that was written right there. And when it says that your young men, your young men and your young women will see visions, I believe that that means some of you will begin to see things in the spiritual realm that are not in the natural realm, and you're going to be able to start acting on them and living your life accordingly. Why? Because all means all. All means all. All means all or all means nothing. It doesn't mean some. It doesn't mean half. All means all. But I want you to realize that this is for, this is for you. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to go deeper. We're going to learn more. But here's what we're going to do tonight. We're not going to wait. We're going to start now. Tonight, I think, at least a large percentage of you, in some capacity, your level of knowledge of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit has, has come up at least a little bit. Or maybe you've been reminded of something. Maybe you've learned something brand new. But the knowledge is, is it's either hit the reset button or it's increased. And so what I want to challenge you to do is let that level of faith match that level of understanding of knowledge. I believe that this is for me. You say that, but feel it. You say, God, I want this. I want this increased faith based on this increased knowledge so that I can have an increased encounter.